Mr. Eden, with globalization making cultural boundaries less and less relevant, what would you suggest to Americans so as to facilitate communication with a global community? You know, that's a really good question. Americans, as well as most of the global community, should take an interest in religious and culturally significant uh, backgrounds. Uh, specifically in the case of Japan, a very good starting point is that of the creationism myth known as Amaterasu Omikam, basically the story of how Earth, Japan, and the world was created. Now, to start this story, we have to place ourselves in a world in which the Earth doesn't exist, but there is a plane. And in this plane, out of the nebulous chaos, spawned three gods. So basically what they do is they have a lot of children. The two most notable are Izanami and Izanagi. And basically they create uh, what we would now call Earth. And they also start to have a lot of kids. And the kids of Izanami and Izanagi basically go on to populate uh, Japan. Now, uh, all of the kids represent basically forces of nature. So Izanagi, he cries out Amaterasu. Amaterasu is just this deity of just absolute brilliance. She is harassed by her younger brother, uh, Susanoo. Amaterasu is so upset that like her brother would harass her so much and like give her so much trouble that she goes into a cave and she locks herself away. And basically at this point, the sun goes out. So basically all the gods outside have this weird party that's like, uh, they're singing and they're really happy. And Amaterasu is in the cave and she's, you know, trying to hide. But she's so curious as to what's going on outside that she peers out of the cave. And when she does, she's met by her own reflection. Because they placed a mirror in front of the cave. And when she sees herself, she's like, oh my gosh, I've got to leave this cave now. And she basically comes back out, and then when she leaves the cave, they seal the cave off, and the sun returns to the sky, and everything is fine. 